Um, my topic is the landscape of post-collapse education. And besides my academic uh, history there, I want to mention that I've been a longtime associate of the Post Carbon Institute and the Transition uh, Network. Uh, so a lot of my ideas come out of that. Uh, so uh, first of all, I'm going to spend about half the time talking about my vision of collapse and what that means. And the second half of it talking about impact on education. Uh, Nate Hagens refers to collapse as the great simplification. When we think about collapse, this is the Roman Forum from 2000 years ago. This is our sort of uh, touchstone of the concept of collapse. And collapse uh, happens, has happened many, many times in many different civilizations. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm informed a lot by, by uh, Hugo Bardi and Joseph Tainter and some of the scholars of collapse over the years. And uh, collapses always share some things in similarity and they're also very different in other ways. So I'm gonna look at some of the ways that our situation is unique. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got about at least four different crises that are uh, collapsing on us at one time here. Uh, peak oil and peak fossil fuels is one, which is gonna deprive us of a lot of the energy we use to run our civilization and our technology. Climate change, of course, is another, which is, is uh, threatening the uh, extinction of half of the species on Earth, including possibly and potentially our own. Um, overpopulation and inequality is a serious problem worldwide, partly because the population has expanded so much during the fossil fuel era. And un unsustainable debt is another problem, which uh, comes into view because uh, you know we if we if the economy doesn't continue to grow our debts national and individual will never be paid off. Um, okay, so okay, right away I see that my advancing uh, here this is probably yeah there we go. So our our societies are very complex self organized networks. And, and involve uh, various nations, various companies, various consumer groups, of course, energy products. And you pull one or two, three, one or two of these things out of this sort of uh, uh, hutch or yurt and the whole thing falls apart. And so uh, it's very likely that with all the different things I just mentioned, we're gonna be in serious trouble in the near future, if not already. One aspect, and I, I'll mention my, my presentation is mostly United States centric because that's where I live, but the things that I'm saying, I think apply pretty much across the board worldwide. Uh, Harvard's, Harvard Business School professor Clayton Christensen says that within the next 10 years, 50% of colleges and universities in the US could go bankrupt or close. Um, so the infrastructure, the educational infrastructure that we rely on to teach our population, um, is under serious threat. And that's gonna have impacts down the line on the way people learn and teach. Um, so my, my, I, I think I'm taking it as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, an assumption that most of our large national governments will probably collapse because they won't have the resources to function and that we'll have a very, very great reorganization of our government and our societies and cultures this is the U.S. Uh, bioregions map, which shows how the how the uh, different parts of the country are are constituted environmentally in terms of climate and population and so on. And so I'm guessing that these bioregions are going to serve as governmental units in some form in the future. And even within these bioregions, you've got a lot of smaller watersheds. And I think the central communities of the future will be built around these watersheds. Um, I'm working with a group that uh, is developing an idea called Rural Resilient Hubs. It's rural because I think that most of the uh, highly populated urban centers will probably depopulate as, as the society collapses and people will go out into the countryside for security, just as they did when the Roman Empire collapsed and the cities collapsed. Um, and so I, uh, this, this particular picture, I believe, is of the Eco Village in Ithaca in New, northern New York. Uh, but uh, and, and eco villages or intentional communities is one way to go or establish small towns and cities may continue to uh, exist in the same space, but it's mostly smaller communities 
with more control over the uh, of their own economy and, and society. Uh, okay, where's the, here we go. Um, so I, I borrowed from Jim Bendel an idea uh, called deep adaptation, and that certainly bears on education. And there are four R's. Resilience involves what do we want to keep? What are the essential parts of our society that we don't want to sacrifice? that we feel like we need to maintain a decent quality of living. Relinquishment is what can we do away with? What can we let go of? Maybe cars, maybe uh, bank, large banks, you know, what, what can we let go of that, that we don't really need to enjoy a decent quality of life? Restoration involves the, the values and skills and behaviors that have been lost. Uh, you know, back in the 19th, 18th centuries, uh, societies would get together to do barn raising to help all their neighbors build their build up their barns and and the ability to do things like uh, repair clothes uh, which people used to do individually and now we farm out to some company to do or we just buy something new so restoration a lot of things from the past need to be brought back and lastly reconciliation and that involves the social part of it the people uh, how will we find new ways to live in societies that may be eth ethnically different or uh, uh, politically diverse or so on and so forth? We need a certain um, tools to make the societies come together in a peaceful and cooperative way. Uh, sustainability, we define in these three categories, of environmental, which involves pollution and resource use. Uh, economics, which involves uh, uh, jobs, economic growth and development, and, and financial systems, and then social, which involves uh, uh, things like social equality and education, standard of living, and so on. Um, now, the group that I'm working with uh, is trying is looking to develop uh, uh, what we call a triple helix model of innovation, which involves a lot of close collaboration, much more so than in the present, between governments and educational institutions and commerce or industry, uh, because we think that the solutions to how to how to how to live in this new world of collapse is going to require a lot more. Uh, close interaction and development between these sectors than we have currently. Um, and part of this, and this is about the only technological thing I'm going to say, we really value the, the, uh, the, the online access to communication and information that exists in our, in our grid these days with the internet. And I'm not sure that the grid, the larger grid, the internet is going to survive collapse. But we think it's possible for local communities to set up their own, through, through the use of renewable energy, their own microgrids that will still enable smaller communities to function and grow. And we hope that that's the case. Um, the new economy in these communities is gonna be what we call a circular economy, which means most of the resources and most of the production will stay within the community. Uh, it involves things like recycling, residual waste, uh, but also on the economic front, things like local banking and local currency uh, to, to try to, to, to sustain the, the growth potential of these smaller communities. Okay, now on to education. Um, the uh, the uh, education is going to be very different in this new world in two ways. Number one, I think it's going to be more based in connection with nature. Uh, re uh, referring back to Marcella's presentation. And I think it's also going to involve, uh, a, you know, training for different sorts of jobs, jobs much more hand-on in, in order to preserve the function of the community. So here's some of the thoughts I have on these things. Uh, there's a class called Big History, which is a wonderful class I had the opportunity to teach, which tries to compress into one semester the entire history of the universe from the Big Bang, through the evolution of species, through the evolution of human civilization, and into the, into the present and even the future. And this is a great tool for situating students in the present day. Where, where are we? You know, where, I am, where am I in the ongoing cont continuity of life and, and civilization and development? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great starting point for helping students situate, situate themselves in the human drama. 
And a lot of this involves more direct learning in nature, not just with, yeah, within nature. Um, getting out of the classroom, understanding how the ecosystem of your community works, uh, what, what, how, how species, how we need to interact with species rather than separating ourselves from nature. Uh, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of this is very live in, and this can be K through 12 and, and, and up sort of uh, learning. Uh, one particularly uh, specific example of this is the bio, using, using biomimicry in the design of technology systems and social systems. Uh, by looking at how things work and grow in nature, we can help apply some of those lessons to how we construct our societies and our own social interaction. Now, the last part of my talk is going to be about uh, the, uh, the, the, the actual jobs that people are going to be prepared for. And in order to determine this, I look at Maslow's hierarchy of, not, of, of values, which is, starts especially down at the bottom with the psychological needs and the safety needs. Um, rainwater harvesting, you know, water is, water is the most basic thing that we all need within a few days in order to survive. And so rain capture and storage, uh, how to distribute water within a society, these are all things that are going to require a lot of, uh, a lot of work uh, by, more, by more average citizens and homeowners instead of just, you know, uh, huge systems that government organizes. Um, Urban permaculture and gardening, uh, uh, food is the second thing on, on Maslow's hierarchy, and we all have to eat every, at least, you know, every few days or we'll starve to death. And this can be done. Uh, the, the, the picture on the right is uh, one of the posters uh, for the victory gardens that were made in the United States during World War I and II, and which I believe provided about 40% of the fruits and vegetables consumed by the United States during that period of, of wartime. So we can do this, you know, we can create a lot of our own food in family gardens and community gardens in, uh, in, in both rural and urban sites. So this is another thing that a lot of people are gonna be doing hands-on work with. Uh, building, of, building of shelter. Uh, this is a picture of one of Michael Reynolds earth ships from Taos, New Mexico, but um, you know, build, building in construction will become, I think, a, a community event where everybody will contribute to help construct shelters for their fellow communitarians. And those structures are going to be different. The, the structures will be uh, need better retrofitting, better insulation, to so that we're not as reliant on heating, for example, for for. Uh, for comfort in hard times of, of climate. Um, one of the last things the oh, regional- just, Yeah. Just so we can wrap up and make sure we have time for all of the other presentations. Sure. Yeah, I think I've, this is Could my next to last- wrap up? This is my next to last slide. Thank you. Uh, I was in Cuba and Cuba has a great health system with, with very local health centers for regular people and for elders. Uh, of like a 40 to one patient to doctor ratio, which I believe is the lowest in the world, that can be achieved. And lastly, and not, not leastly, uh, the healing trauma. When we have a, a collapse, uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of grieving, a lot of loss, people lose partners, families, uh, communities. Uh, so we're, that's part of the educational system is to help people heal from their trauma and, and be, become whole again in order to face the future. Uh, I've got a bibliography and I'll put this on the chat and along with the rest of the presentation and thank you very much for listening.